My name is Lara Jean Korostecki. I was born in Brampton, Ontario, uh, which is just outside of Toronto, and it is a suburb. And I grew up there until I was 17, and then I got into the Stratford Festival Apprenticeship Program. And I was at Stratford for four years, then I moved to England, and as you said, I, I have a love for the bard, so I did my master's in classical acting, which um, means that I should be an expert in Shakespeare, whether or not I am is for those who see me act to decide. Uh, and then I came back here and started doing film and TV. Uh, so I've lived in Toronto now for four and a half years. Yeah, Please Kill Mr. Know-It-All is the name of a film, which is a very long one. And it is a Canadian rom-com uh, created by Sandra Feldman and Colin Carter. Sandra Feldman wrote, produced, directed, I feel like did probably everything in that film. She's fantastic. Uh, and it is the story of, so my, I'm Sally and I am a advice, column, advice columnist and uh, I write this advice column called Please Kill Mr. Know-It-All. And one day uh, they say to me, I write it anonymously, and they say, well, we want a face for the for your column, and I'm such a shy person that I don't want to give myself away. Um, so I get this face, I literally find this guy in a movie theater and draw his picture and give them this drawing. And it turns out he's a hitman. So suddenly he's getting recognized, he can no longer do his job, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that ensues where everyone is trying to kill this anonymous advice columnist who doesn't actually exist but is me but is it so it's a it's a lot of mistaken identity missed identity all kind of wrapped up in a romantic story uh, so it's great you have to see it you have to see it to know it uh, to really understand it it's very very good you can see the film this Thursday at 9:15 at the Royal it's screening, screening for the Canadian Film Fest. Fantastic. And it will be released at some point in May to select theatres as well. There are some that I've been told you can know and some that I've been told you can't. Specifically by my boss, Brian Fuller, who is, I think, the only person who could bring this story to the small screen. He is of Pushing Daisies and Wonderfalls and Dead Like Me fame and he's incredibly creative and just an incredible person to have as your showrunner, someone that I feel everybody in the cast really believes in because he's a brilliant leader and a brilliant storyteller. Uh, I play Freddie Lowndes. Freddie Lowndes is a tabloid journalist and in the Tom Harris novels she is a he and in the movies Prior to this television show, The Famous Manhunter and Red Dragon, where Freddie Lowndes appears, it's played by Stephen Lang and Manhunter and Philip Seymour Hoffman, I think most people remember from Red Dragon. Um, I am fearless, I guess would be the right word. Nothing really scares Freddie. Nothing yet, at least, really scares Freddie. Um, when I first sat down with Brian for a conversation about this character, he referenced, uh, he showed me a picture of Rebecca Brooks, who is a journalist, most famous right now for being arrested and under investigation for phone hacking scandal in the UK. She used to be editor of News of the World. Uh, and she has fiery, ferocious red hair. And he showed me this picture and he said, this is you. <laughs> and I, I thought, okay and read this brilliant Vanity Fair article when I went home that night on Rebecca Brooks and um, post, this, post the scandal that uh, had been written, by her, uh, written about her. And it gave me such insight to where Freddie's at. She's not Rebecca Brooks as you see her now, and she's not Freddie Lowndes as you see her, as you see him in the Tom Harris novels, but somewhere in between a young upstart 
blogger in a modern age where she gets to write her own blog, no one's in charge of her, and this makes her, I think, a little more dangerous. So whenever I appear, I really make an appearance. And uh, she's been a riot to play. So much fun. I do, I do think, um, actually, or, or my love for theatre has translated into these roles. I was thinking, uh, uh, doing a, a scene recently, Freddie has a lot of big words that she says, and one of the produ producers said to me, well, it wouldn't sound good out of anyone else's mouth. And I was thinking, well, yeah, maybe a bit of classical theatre training helps you be able to say the big words and sound like it makes sense. My parents are amazing and they sat my brother and I, so they took my brother and I, I was eight, my brother's ten, and they sat us down beforehand, we listened to the entire soundtrack and they took us through the entire story. And the first time I was introduced to Shakespeare, I think I was ten or eleven, we went to Dream in High Park and it was A Midsummer Night's Dream, same thing, they took us through it and told us the entire story. So because I knew the stories ahead of time, I think at that young age you can, I mean kids, kids can get anything if you really help them through it. Um, so uh, I, I kind of went there and got it. My parents said I was on the edge of my seat the entire time and I still have such a vivid recollection of being in the Royal Alex and leaning, we were in the nosebleeds and leaning over the railing because I was on a railing seat just immersed in this story and uh, the next day I went to church when I was little and the next day I was in church because we went on a Saturday night and I took the church bulletin liturgy that you get at a church and drew little pictures of the entire Les Mis story. So I made like a storyboard outline of the play I'd seen. So I think my parents knew at that point that they were doomed. <laughs> or maybe I was doomed. I, uh, I, I would really like, there's a couple bard characters that I still haven't done. Well, oh, there's more than a couple. There's quite a few that I haven't done. And now that I'm, I'm transitioning, I, I, I'm still in the ingenue zone and will be for a long time. Um, but I, I haven't done Imogen and Cymbeline yet. And Cymbeline is, is not produced very often, but I think it's such a, just a wonderful, wonderful play. And that's one of his that I would really, really, really love to do. Uh, and there's a couple Chekhov's two that I'd love, Nina and Seagull I haven't done yet and I really would like to do that one. Um, but mainly I, I want to make my way through the Bard eventually. Juliet was one that I needed to check off. It was what I auditioned originally at Stratford with and, and had been using the Gallop of Pace monologue for years and then when I finally got to play it, it was, it was pretty perfect actually. It was a, a perfect casting of Romeo and I had uh, a bit of a say in that and it was really nice, um, he was amazing so it was a, yeah that was, that was quite a role, that was a good one. And now I got more to do. Ask questions. Ask everybody. Um, when I was at Stratford, I was 17 my first year there and I had the great pleasure and um, honor, really, of being mentored by people like Stephen Wimet and Tom McCamus and the late Peter Donaldson, who was incredible, and the late Richard Minette. And uh, Peter was um, incredible. I was in two shows with him my first year. And he sat down with me one day and he looked at me and went, you are just the most curious person I know. And I didn't know if he meant intrusive or actually curious, but I think there is a great fine line there, but it's necessary. My first season, when I did Dan Vermeer, my first series regular role, I asked questions to everybody. As soon as I got on a set, I wanted to know, okay, cameraman, tell me, what are you doing right now? How can I help understand? How can I work better with you? Uh, so it's all about, I think, asking questions and even Stratford, um, my audition for Stratford came out of asking questions, which was, uh, I was uh, doing some speech arts, I was doing some monologues for the Peel Music Festival in Brampton, and I was doing my Juliet Gallop of Pace, and it was the first time I'd kind of worked on it, and I was going to Stratford to see Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and Martha Henry is a family friend, and I called up Martha and I said, 
hi, uh, we're coming to see your show, do you think that maybe I could meet with you and you can workshop this piece with me that I'm going to do? And she said, yeah, sure, no problem. So we went in a rehearsal hall and she made me run around and she exhausted me and it was wonderful. And I learned so much just from that experience. And I walked away from it feeling so much more prepared and eager to take on just the Speech Arts Festival. Didn't hear anything. Four months later, she called me up and said, I've just been talking to Richard Manette. It looks like there's a good spot for a young person as an apprentice this year. Do you want to come in and audition? So that all just comes out of seeking more knowledge and seeking more information. Uh, genuinely, too. Genuinely having uh, that childlike curiosity that I think never lose it. Always ask. Always ask.